Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with our um, journal. So um, if you guys are doing the worksheet, go ahead and pull out, pull out your um, last sheet from uh, last week. So we're going to start right here on general journal page five. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and do it right underneath my black bar. So I, at least I know that with my trial balance, I made it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and pull out our third week scenario. So we're starting on the 15th of June. So let's get started. What has happened? We're setting up the store. Okay. And then we pay Las Vegas Remodeling Company for remodeling. Mm-hmm. Invoice seventeen fifty four. We use check fifteen thirteen. Okay. So we're gonna um. So since we're paying, we're going to debit accounts payable. No, first thing to do is to look at the subsidiary ledger to see how much we owe. Good job. All right. So subsidiary ledger. This is LV Remodeling. I think I missed it. Oh, here it is. Okay. And it shows that we owe $1,890. Correct. So you would debit accounts payable for $1,890. And then we're going to credit our checking. Good. All right, what account number is accounts payable? I believe it's twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. In checking. Uh ten one hundred. All right. All right, what do I do now? And then you're going to go to your check register. Okay. And we're going to put um, the date of June 15th. Mm -hmm. And it's check number 1513. And we're going to put it, um, the amount will be 1890. Mm-hmm. And it's to Las Vegas Remodeling. Good. All right. And then we're going to go back to our journal and put a note. Yes. All right. What's my note going to say? Um, Las Vegas remodeling. Check number 1513. Invoice 1754. Good. Invoice number 1754, comma, check number 1513. Good. Okay. Okay, what's next? Update the subsidiary ledger. Okay, Tennyson wants to update the subsidiary ledger. All right, so go ahead. Tell me how to update my subsidiary ledger. So uh, put the date first. 
Okay, so we're going to do another line item. Good. And uh, check number. Okay, check number. 1513. 15. Then the invoice number. Okay, 1754. Then uh, no uh, post uh, GJ5. Mm -hmm. And no terms and uh, under payments, we can uh, put uh, 89. All right. And if we pull this formula down, what you're going to notice is it becomes a negative number. No, the invoice amount should be 89. Okay, so we actually have it up here. Okay, so it says if we didn't have that, let's let, let me undo that. So control Z. If I don't have that right now, I currently owe a total of 3,400, right? In my accounts payable from my first one right here, it says that I owe 1890. Because I'm making the payment, what's gonna happen here is I'm going to create a negative number to reduce my total of accounts payable. Do you see how that happened? Now what you could do is, right, instead of creating a new line item, what, could, what you could have done is you could have placed it in the first item right here by making the payment for 1890 and that will eliminate your accounts payable. But so then, Mm -hmm. number. Say that again. Uh, we have to put the check number there. Exactly. That's why I tell you, I think it's best if you were to create a second or a new line underneath. So then you can put your check number. You can also put the reference because your reference number is not going to be the same as what you originally had it on, right? You see the difference? We originally got our bill on the third I mean, on the, on the general journal number three, but we're paying it on general journal number five. And the dates are totally different, right? So in this case, that's why I recommend you to not place it in the first line and create a second line. But in this case, because we've already have the invoice in there, we have an outstanding number in the accounts payable um, row. So all we have to do is just place the payment right here. And we have the check number validating it, okay? So here in my payment, I just type in 1890, no negative number. And if I pull my formula down, which, excuse me. If I pull my formula down, right, which was my invoice minus my uh, prepaid minus my um, returns minus discounts minus payments, right? I get a negative number bringing me my grand total that I owe is only for invoice sev uh, for 1760, which means I've paid off my uh, first balance for 1890. I paid it off, so now I only owe this company 1560. All right, do you see how um, I created this extra line item and you see how I calculated it and now I'm, it's bringing me to my new grand total which I used to owe 4,000 earlier right but because I made that payment now I only owe 1560 okay all right what's next What do I do next? Purchase of office equipment for 150. Mm. What's, what's the, what's, what the have I taught you to do right after the journal? Ledger. General. You post it to the ledger, right? So you, by you hopping on to the next scenario, there you go. You found your first discrepancy right there. You forgot to update your general ledger. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my general ledger. And which account am I going to start off with? Uh, 
What, accounts payable. What came first in your journal? Accounts payable. Accounts payable. So I'm going to do that one first. So here's my accounts payable. All right. Go ahead. How do I fill it in? How do I fill it in? I have it good. Mm -hmm. Invoice number? Okay, am I, uh, am I entering a bill or am I paying the bill? All right, so should I include my check number as well? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot all about that. Just in third one. Good. All right, am I going to debit the account or am I going to credit the account? Debit. You're going to debit. Whatever you placed in your general journal is going to reflect it in your ledger. So now that I have my first debit oh, sorry excuse me i'm going to reformat it now that i have my first debit or for the first transaction right my debit what's my and what's my new balance going to be it's 14000 $435.89. Correct. So I've already entered in my formula, so I don't need to recalculate it. But for those who are on another separate worksheet or also doing the Excel, make sure that your numbers match mine. Okay, so good. Now what's the next thing that we have to do? Then we post to our checking account. Then we go post to our checking account. So assets, all right. How do we fill this part out? Have the check number. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Okay. Unless you want to, yes. Or you could just write the invoice number. The invoice number pretty much tells you everything. Everything, yeah. Let's just say right there in that other journal. Okay. Yeah, invoice number. Oh, 1754. Okay. Lynn? Mm hmm. Oh, you're about to fix it. Never mind. Mm hmm. And then what else? General Journal 5. Lynn? Mm -hmm. It's um, 1754. You put 1752. Oh, 1754. All right. Thank you. 1754. Got it. Credit? Credit? Right, bringing my new value to be $2,299.92. Okay. So what do we do next? All right, good. So we move on to the next one. All right, we updated our journal, we updated our ledger, and we updated our subsidiary ledger. All right. So what happened here? Purchased office supplies from office supply store for one hundred and fifty dollars, and we paid with the business credit card. Okay. So, 
Office equipment, debit. Not office equipment. What did we buy? Office, um, office supplies. Office supplies, okay. So we're on the chart of accounts, so we're looking for office supplies. All right. What account number is office supplies? 11800. 11800. All right. Are we debiting our office supplies or are we crediting our office supplies? Okay, for 11,800. Okay. All right. We have it 150. We're going to debit it for 150. All right. Now, what's next? What's Can my. We, uh, uh, go ahead. The um, business credit card. And what is that called? Visa payable. Visa payable. Good. Correct. All right. So whatever's in your chart of accounts, it has to be word for word, right? But for you guys, I'm okay if you guys do similar words. But in the professional world, you need to select or whatever it is, right? The account and the account name, right? Because there is a possibility where you might forget that you have this account and create another account. And then you're going to have multiple accounts with the same exact name but just different account numbers. So you wanna be very, very careful and making sure that you ensure by checking the chart of accounts that do, does this account exist? And if it does, what is it? And what's the actual title of it? So making sure that you are looking at it word for word. So visa payable, good. And what account number is that? 2200 or 22,000. Good. I got. I, I understood what you said. So, all right. So for a total of. One fifty. One fifty. All right. Am I complete with my journal? No. Already under the visa payable, you can put the, you know, uh, office supply purchase. The description basically <laughs> purchase of office supplies. So, I'm gonna first things I'm going to do is who's my vendor? My vendor is going to be my office supply okay. store, all right. And then you could do whatever you want. You say, well, you want to say purchase, purchase office supplies, it's uh, self explanatory, it's exactly. It is very self explanatory, so you don't want it. Okay, so we just need to make sure that you indicate the first thing that you want to indicate is always going to be your vendor. Because, again, what happens if you need to go return them? Do you know who you actually bought them from? All right, what if you're not the person who bought this? Someone else was. Okay, so at least place in at least the vendor or whoever you were dealing with. So in this case, office supplies store. All right. Now, where do we go? General ledger. General ledger. This is close to subsidiary ledger, but we pull it when we put it at the general first. What What did I teach you this entire time? General ledger subsidiary. Correct. So, ledger. So where do I go when I'm looking? Which what what's my first account I'm going to go to? Assets. Where am I going to? What account am I going to? Office supplies. Good. So that should be page five or six in um. The worksheet so it should be right after office I mean uh, business supplies so office supplies right 
right? How do I fill this out? You can leave it. It's because you're already in your office supplies. It's already self-explanatory. Unless I was specific and said you bought pens, papers, and et cetera, et cetera. What's next? Visa payable. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is page 18 in the worksheet. What am I going to fill in? General journal number five, credit 150, right? So what's my new balance in my credit card? Four seventy thirty one. Good. Right. What's next? Some of my now, right? now it's the subsidiary. Good. All right. Who is my vendor? Office supply store. Office supply store. O P. Here you go. How do I fill this in? There is no invoice. So, again, self explanatory. You know, mm -hmm. give them specifics. I just, I mm -hmm. would leave it blank myself. I, I do not. Okay. And just show the reference number. Okay. And then, okay, five. There's my pen, my debit, my phone number. So, I can go with the. Okay, so prepaid is when you actually paid in advance. Yes, paid in advance yeah. Did we have any advance payments? None. Okay. Was there an invoice amount or a receipt amount? No. So, okay, so if I do this, right, what's my formula here? No. Oh. It's going to be invoice first oh. minus prepaid. Oh. Right? So if I were to do that, I owe, I'm under by 150. So what is, what did my receipt tell me I had? How do I know I have to pay $150? Right, but how do I know how how, how do I know? Uh, how do I know I have to pay hundred fifty dollars? Did 
Because you actually went to the store and bought the office supplies for one hundred and fifty dollars. So what am I supposed to get? What am I? What am I supposed to receive when I leave the store? A receipt. A receipt. So your receipt is technically your invoice, correct? Yes. So on my receipt, it should have said I owe one hundred fifty dollars worth of supplies, and I paid it with my Visa credit card. So do I now? It shows me that I owe. Mr. Office Supply Store, nothing. And that's a true. That is true. And I have a receipt saying it was for $150. So in my notes, what I would have put here is I paid with the Visa credit card. All right? Just so then I know and I can look at my Visa um, credit card bill or my um, monthly report, right? I can see where that transaction has happened. All right? Good. So what's next? Purchase from wholesale food store, 60 pounds of sugar at um, 36 cents per pound in three cases, which is 12 pack of non-dairy creamer at $16.33 per case. And the sugar is $21.60, and the creamer is $48.99. Total due $70.59. And it was paid with a business credit card. All right. So how do I journalize this? What did I buy? Sugar. sugar yes, and we creamer. bought. Mm -hmm. And let's go check out our chart of accounts. Do I have an account for creamer and... 11, sugar is 11,770. Good. 11,770. Coffee creamer is going to be 11,775. Mm -hmm. So here, date. All right. So sugar was 11,770. 11,775. So for what amount am I going to place in here? Twenty-one sixty for the sugar because uh, based on that uh, the explanation, the presentation, there, mm -hmm. that indicate taxes, nor delivery, or whatever other costs. I have a question for you. Do, is tax is uh, food ever taxed? No. 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 no not in Vegas. Oh, sorry. It, that that's everywhere. You don't pay tax on food. Are you, are you in Chicago? <laughs> in Chicago, you pay tax on food. That's interesting. Yeah. They pay every single. Okay. Wow. All right. So, how much is the creamer? Forty-eight ninety-nine. Forty-eight ninety-nine. All right. For visa payable, good. Credit is visa payable. Twenty-two thousand. All right. For the total of seventy fifty-nine. All right. So where do we go now? The narration goes to food store. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, which one? The narration of the journal. So subsidiary or general ledger? Ledger first. Okay. No, uh, below the this uh, general journal, okay, you have create the comment, right? Oh, you want to create a comment? Okay. So what's the comment going to be? It's a wholesale food store. Okay, good. Wholesale food. Store. Okay. That's enough, right? Yep, that should be good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, where do we go? Ledger. Ledger. Okay. So, where are we going to go first? Uh, sugar. Sugar. It should be either page uh, four or five. So, here I found my sugar. Right, how do I fill it in? Okay, you 
item indicate uh, 60 pounds. Okay, good. 60 pounds. Okay. Uh, so it's a substantial fine? No? You, you can if you want to. Okay. Am, am I too restricted? <laughs> Do you say put the uh, vendor's name first? You can if you'd like. It's whatever details it helps you to recognize this transaction. So um, we have 60 pounds at, what was it? You said 30 cents? And Tennyson wants to put Whole Foods. Wholesale food store. Wholesale. Foods, All right? Wholesale food store. Okay. Post reference. JJ five. Journal journal five. All right. Twenty one sixty. Twenty one sixty, making my balance to also be twenty one sixty. All right. Then I'm going to go down to my creamer and do the same thing. So June 15th. But what is going to be under my items? Okay. Three cases. So three cases at sixteen thirty three um, whole sale foods store. Okay. My post reference. And Forty-eight ninety-nine, right? Making my debit balance to be also forty-eight ninety-nine. Okay. So where do I go next? Visa payable. Visa payable. So uh, liabilities. Visa payable. I'm already here. Six fifteen. And what am I going to place here? Food Say that again, wholesale food? Yeah. Okay. Okay, what else? Oh, we can indicate, um, well, whole, wholesale food is already self explanatory again. It's just a matter of redundancy. <laughs> okay. So, chair, journal, journal. So general journal number five. And then what's my credit amount? So oh, there you go. 7059. Good. 7059. And what's my new balance going to be now? Five forty ninety. Five forty ninety. Okay. Good. All right. Now what's next? Subsidiary ledger. Yes, subsidiary ledger. And we're going to go find Whole Foods. Should be the very last page of your vendor's list. Wholesale Foods. Okay. All right, what is going to be my notes? Sugar and creamer. Lisa Babel. And Tennyson says visa payable. All right. Was there a receipt number? No. No. Post reference? Mm -hmm. GJ5. GJ5. Terms? Invoice amount 7059. 7059. 
Payment is the same, 70.59. All right, so my formula, all right, is invoice minus prepaid minus discounts minus returns minus payments. So therefore, I owe wholesale foods zero dollars. Okay, so what is next? You see the bill from Silver State Electric Power with an invoice number 3351 for the amount of 1070 due in four days. Okay, so what was the Silver State Electrical hired for? That's for the, is that the grinder or brew one? Something like that. Mm -hmm. For the coffee grinder. For the coffee, yeah. Where is my coffee grinder? Miscellaneous suspense. Miscellaneous suspense. So how am I going to journalize this? A miscellaneous suspense? We're going to put it in miscellaneous suspense because this work was done for the coffee grinder. And therefore, we know where the coffee grinder is. And then on the next one, if you look ahead, it says to transfer coffee grinder out of miscellaneous suspense. So this is the last piece of the puzzle, correct? This is the last thing that we need to add to the grinder, right? Um, remember, it's all of the cost it takes to get the asset ready for to be placed in service. So in this case, this is our last piece. So we're gonna place it into miscellaneous suspense. Okay, that should be account number 19990, right? What is going to be my credit account? Grinder. We're not, we're not, we don't have the grinder available in our account. Accounts payable. Accounts payable, good. Because we received a bill. Okay. Now, what was the amount that I am required to pay? And seventy. Okay. What's my description going to be? Or what's my yeah, what's the rest of my notes going to be? Silver state. Silver state, good. Silver state. Invoice number three three five one. I'm gonna go uh okay, so invoice silver state electrical. Invoice number three three five one. Okay. And when is it due? Four days from now. So net net four. All right, we'll figure that out when we get to the subsidiary ledger. Oh, okay. So you just need to just convert that that A is equal to net four. <laughs> that, that's okay. Don't worry, okay. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. All right. So Silver State Electrical Invoice Number Three Three Five One, and it's going to be Net Four. All right. So where do we go now? General Ledger. General Ledger. Good. All right. Which account are we going to go first?
miscellaneous suspense. Miscellaneous suspense. So in assets. So this is going to be page 16 or 17, depending on which part you're on, uh, for the ledger. Um, yeah, for the ledger, for the workbook, for the worksheets. Uh, but in this case, it's the last um, table in our workbook. So miscellaneous suspense, right? So what do I place in my item? So what you want to what do you want to put? We could do the invoice number because that's pretty that pretty much sums up everything. Anything else? What is my ref post reference? Um, right. Am I going to debit or credit the account? What does it show in your journal? It's credit. What? Let's oh, do it again. It's debit. It's debit. It's debit. Okay. We're going to debit it. All right. Making my new balance to be. Forty-one fifty-eight oh seven. Forty-one fifty-eight oh seven. Okay. Where do we go next? Liabilities account payable. Liabilities account payable. So that should you should be on page seventeen for this one. This is six fifteen. And what are we gonna place here? Invoice number. Invoice. Three three five one. All right. And what's my post reference? G J five and what's my credit going to be in the amount of? And seventy, which should bring you back up to fifteen five oh five eighty nine. All right. Good. Where do we go next? Subsidiary ledger. Yes. All right. We're going to go find Silver State Electrical, which should be a couple up. Silver State Electrical. All right. Hmm? Did you want to make any notes? No. Okay. What's my press reference? Okay. Was I given terms? For 
was was it embroidery that we went? I don't know, remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Was it an embroidery? Yeah. Yes. So net four. So when's the due date? How much was my bill? Because it was ten seventy. Was that ten seventy? Mm-hmm. So my accounts payable? Mm-hmm. Be ten seventy. Good. Right. What is next? What is next? We have to transfer the grinder from miscellaneous assessments to the asset. Correct. We're going to move it from miscellaneous suspense into the asset. So, how do I generalize this? We're going to. The expenses uh, incurred. Say it again. Add up all the expenses incurred, the foundation, and the electric. We placed it all, we, we placed them all together. Yeah. So we don't need to incur any more expenses. It's already been done. It's already been counted for. Go ahead, Mia, what were you saying? Uh, credits and miscellaneous. Okay, we're going to debit coffee grinder. Good. We're going to debit the asset. And credit uh, miscellaneous suspense. Correct. Because we're essentially, if we look at our, if we look at our ledger right now, okay, under miscellaneous suspense, right, we have the coffee grinder right here, right? We, we purchased it for, um, the total of what the uh, 1528 because we removed the coffee uh, brewer. So now that our coffee grinder, it's a total of a thousand uh, one thousand uh, uh, five hundred and twenty eight. We've entered in our foundation, so we increased it by um, fifteen sixty, and we also just recently we just uh, plugged in our um, electrical work. So now my grand total for the entire cost of my coffee grinder is going to be for the $4,158.07. And in order to remove this entire thing, you're going to credit the whole entire thing because that's your coffee grinder right there. So by crediting it, you're going to zero out the account. All right. And we're moving this entire amount into the coffee grinder. All the expenses that we've incurred, the foundation and the electrical work, is already placed in there. It's already added in with the um, cost of the asset. So now the actual equipment is getting is ready to be placed into service. So here is our grand total amount. So I need to zero out four one fifty eight oh seven. All right. Four one fifty eight oh seven, and this is just gonna match that one, all right? And I'm taking it away. I'm pulling it from miscellaneous expense, so therefore I'm gonna credit miscellaneous expense. Right? 
and I'm just moving it straight into the asset. Right? So what is my coffee grinder account number? 15020. 15020. 15020. That's the grinder? Yeah. Okay. Um, and my miscellaneous suspense? 19990. Good. Alright, and here, what kind of note are you going to place here? We're not paying anything for miscellaneous suspense, we're just moving it. Moving to new account? Yes, move to new account, good. Move to new account. All right. Now, we completed our journal. What is next? Ledger. Mm -hmm. Now we're physically going to actually transfer um, my entire amount out of the miscellaneous suspense. But in this case, let's just go look, let's look at the journal. So which account are we gonna go first? The grinder. Mm -hmm. The coffee grinder. Let's do that first so that we don't um, lose track of what we're doing. Okay, so here's the coffee grinder. Um, I don't remember what page it's on. I wanna say it's page thir 13. Um, so 6, 15, all right. Anything you need to write in the item? Coffee grinder number one. Okay. Post reference. DJ five. General journal number five. All right. Debit or credit? Debit. Debit for forty one five eight zero oh, seven. Making my normal balance to be forty one fifty eight zero oh, seven. Then now we can go ahead and go down to our bottom page for the miscellaneous suspense. We should be on page like the end of 17, depending on what part you are on. Okay. And then what's my note going to be here? Remove coffee grinder. Yes, me remove coffee grinder. General journal number five. five. And what are we going to? Four one five eight. Four one five eight zero oh, seven. In the credit side. So therefore, my balance in my miscellaneous suspense should be zero. It's gone. We moved it and transferred it over into another account. Now. That doesn't mean we paid off anything. We still owe the Silver State Electrical money. We still also owe LV remodeling for the 1560 for the foundation, right? We still owe them because those are dealing with our vendors. This is us dealing with our personal accounts internally. So this is us just moving and shifting from one area to another. So as far as account balances, right? We're just transferring from one account to another. Nothing's been paid, nothing has been done, okay? All right. So we entered in um, our information in the general ledger. Now question to you, do we need to update our subsidiary ledger? No. 
No, because this is internal, right? We're not dealing with any vendors, all right? So let me see. Um, okay, let's go ahead and do this one and then we'll call a break after this. So what happened here um, for the last thing that happened on the 15th? What happened here? Purchase order. Okay. For Ukrainian Supreme Coffee. Okay. So with this, what do we do here? And then the purchase order with this. We're only going to update it in the purchase orders. Okay. So here, we know that this was on the 15th, okay? Purchase order matches 307, all right? Who are we making this purchase order to? At Liz Coffee. Okay. All right, what am I buying? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go right ahead and write 250 pounds of coffee. Okay. And what is my estimated invoice amount? $366.25 is what my... Um, quoted invoice should reflect, all right? Okay. We, 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 that's just the purchase order, yes. Okay. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and take our break here. So we're going to stop right here on the 16th of June. Okay, so right now it is exactly... 10 o'clock, so go ahead and take a 15 minute break. Um, I'll give you a little extra minute, so please don't be, uh, please be back by no later than uh, 10, 17, or 10, 18, I'll give you 10, 18. All right, so 